Last week in Round Sailing, we explored the Rosario and San Bernardo archipelagos outside Colombia. We went diving and got to see the most crowded island in the world. To get out to the open sea, we went south to a channel that led us between the reefs. The wind wasn't in our favor and we were close hauled as we sailed west towards Panama. We just, uh, not just, we left Tintipan um, two hours ago, something like that. And we are on our way to uh, Obaldea on the border between uh, Panama and Colombia. It's in Panama. Um, it's about 105 nautical miles there, so it's an overnight sail. Right now we're uh, yeah, closed hold. And uh, yeah, how do you say? We're very high into the wind. So not doing very good speed and we're yeah a bit healed over. But it's okay because the wind isn't very strong. We have uh, yeah 15, 16 knots apparent doing between four and a half, five knots. Right now it's actually less. 4.3 fair play yeah they're a bit behind us uh, I guess they can't go this high as we can because they're a catamaran but at least they are sailing too so what we're hoping for now is that we could uh, that the wind will keep turning towards the north so that we will have a beam reach uh, during the night but if we're unlucky, there will be no wind at all. So then it will be motor again tonight. There's been a lot of debris in the water. We've been hitting a lot of logs and coconuts and yeah, a lot of stuff. And it's kind of hard because we're sailing straight into the sun here. So it's hard to see what we have in front of us in the water.
but it's okay still because the winds are not big at all. They're very very small. The waves so, or the wind? Waves? What did I say? The winds. <laughs> I mean the waves. <laughs> the waves are small, so it's okay. Mm, that's where we're going, Obaldia, Obladi, Obada. During the early night we were still sailing and the clear sky was full of stars and the moon was shining. This morning the night went by fast. We didn't, sleep, we didn't film anything because we were so tired so we were asleep and then on our shift we were just yeah oh now I hear thunder and at sunrise the weather was nice had the sun for a while but then it's just the clouds have been thicker and thicker and now we are like surrounded by squalls on this side not on that side it looks good but now we are motoring straight into a big squall. <laughs> During the night the wind just died completely so we had to start the engines. Uh, we want to arrive in Obaldia before it gets dark so we can anchor. So I think we're going to get boarded by the Panamanian uh, Navy or Coast Guard. Or just, Colombian. Yeah, or Colombian, we're not really sure. Yeah, they contacted us on the BHF and they wanted us to respond and when we did they don't call us back and now we can see that they have changed course and coming straight for us. This area traditionally or historically has been a hot spot of uh, drug trafficking and um, human trafficking across the border from Colombia to uh, Panama so I guess that's why they are uh, yeah, doing these checks what do you think Malin? I don't know I'm looking at the front coming behind us as well doesn't look too good yeah it's cool yeah. Yeah. it looks like a front yeah actually it does at first we didn't know that they wanted to get in contact with us since they didn't use our boat name or call sign they were only calling out coordinates in Spanish that weren't correct. Romeo Alpha November. Nombre y nacionalidad del capitán de la nave. El nombre del capitán es Johan Hamalun, sueco de Suecia. Okay, so we are gonna get boarded by the Panamanian uh, National Armada, Armada, and uh, they called us up. And uh, seems that they don't have any AIS, so they couldn't see who we were because we have a we have a transponder, so you can see all our information on the AIS, like our name, where it's from, how big the the boat is etc but they have asked us a lot of questions in Spanish <laughs> first time for me answering this type of question in Spanish uh, how many how many people we were on board if we have any crew if we have animals any weapons and uh, then they decided to come aboard and do an inspection so now we have slowed down to three knots well we have a little go a little bit faster and they're gonna and uh, put down a rib boat or something and this is actually the first time I've been told when I get in 
getting boarded and they told me to turn off the engine and no speed at all. Normally when you get boarded at sea they want you to continue on your course, at least when you're in open water. Continue on your course and maintain your speed in course. But here they want us to stop totally and be dead in the water. We were not allowed to film the inspection for the protection of the Navy personnel's identities. We got boarded by the Colombian National Armada, uh, the Buque Nariño is called, that ship. And uh, we got boarded by five, there were five, right? Young male. Six. Six, yeah, yeah. there were six. And uh, came with the reboot. I mean, we couldn't film, uh, it's not allowed. And uh, they went searching through the boat. I was with them. Uh, taking photos, doing their uh, normal investigation and uh, then we were filling out some papers, they were asking questions uh, yeah, very friendly, very nice guys uh, and uh, now they will do the same with Fair Play so Fair Play is approaching now let's put up the solar panels and they were very interested and they were very amazed about what we're doing especially that we have uh, soon been out for two years they were like what really two years and they were asking how fast we can go they weren't very impressed when we said yeah we normally do five knots with the engine <laughs> seven to sometimes eight with uh, for sale <laughs> so they are coming from the pacific coast actually so they went through the canal it was a bit surprising that they came from Colombia. I thought they were from Panama for yes, sure. Yes, yeah. Because we were right outside the Panamanian coast yeah. here, so. And they have been uh, at sea now for 20 days straight. We're good. Uh, they did their inspection and uh, they will come out with their revolt. We have another two hours before it's dark and uh, we will just make it before that, which is nice. Uh, give a little bit more throttle on the engine, now we're doing 5.2 five knots. We have around 6 nautical miles left into the bay, into the anchorage. Only bad thing with the anchorage is that it's um, pretty open, it's not very sheltered so there might be some swell coming in you can already see the swell coming from the north so we will see hopefully we'll, we only have to stay one night and then we'll make it uh, further northwest to the next anchorage so we will do the check-in tomorrow morning it's a monday which is good because i think if we would have checked in today if we would have arrived earlier they would have overcharged us since it's weekend. I think they do that here in Panama. So, check in tomorrow, getting our cruising permit and pay the immigration fees for both of us. And I think we also get a SARPE, it's like an exit document because Panama is divided in different regions and when you go between them with a the boat, you have to get a sarpe like to exit and enter. So we're almost in Obaldia. The peninsula you see over there is the border between uh, Colombia and uh, Panama. And in here is the Darien Gap. It was so nice to arrive to a new country and once again be greeted by dolphins.
Yeah, this would be so cool. Uh, yeah, I wonder how the village is. If it's, yeah, it's hard to imagine how what type of village it is. If there is, I mean, there's no no roads leading to this village, so I guess they will they get all their supplies from the the boats. And uh, yeah, it's in the middle of nowhere. So I think it will be a kind of kind of strange experience of Baldia. So the sun is about to set and we yeah we just arrived and I anchored here in Obaldia. Yeah the surroundings here are absolutely stunning. Look at that jungle. The Darien Gap. Amazing. The only drawback here will be that probably it will be really rolly tonight because this anchorage is pretty unprotected from the swell. As you, yeah, maybe you can't see it, but there's quite a lot as well. So yeah, if we don't put out a stern anchor, Ron has a tendency to put her beam against the, the swell. So it can be pretty rolly. And because we're only staying here until tomorrow, I will not put out the stern anchor. So we'll be rolly, but it's only for one night. So, so look at this. This is what we have ahead of us, this coastline up here. Looks amazing. Thank you for watching this episode. We hope you want to join us as we sail along the coast of Panama towards the canal. Please subscribe and we really appreciate a thumbs up. Thank you.